Hey guys, hope you're well. Um, so yeah, as I promised, just going to do a review of yesterday's jerk set. Um, as you know, I like to dissect my videos probably a um, bit too much. But also, just want to obviously get you guys involved. I had some great comments on the original video that I've uploaded into the uh, Kettlebell community. Loads of different points, which is fantastic for me because I'm getting to see my sets from loads of different people's eyes. So once again, thanks very much for commenting. Some stuff that uh, some guys have raised that um, weren't even at the forefront of mine. So when I uploaded the video, there was one thing that really I was able to hone in straight away. So I'm going to dive into that. But there's also a few things that upon looking at this video probably 20 times now, um, I've, I've noticed a few more little tweaks and stuff that I need to, to make. So, but I just want to dig into the to the main the main thing that cost me the reps. Now, what I say to a lot of my guys in the gym is, it the outcome is always a matter of repeated and sustained effort or repeated the same action. Okay, so it wasn't necessarily a mistake during the rep that caused me to my left tricep to buckle and my shoulder not to really lock out on minute three and three fifty or something like that along the line the one thing that was apparent to me straight away is as i'm trying to stabilize what i'm trying to stabilize with is just my shoulders in terms of front delts and traps not really stabilizing through trying to engage and pull my lats down and pull them together so that's causing a bit of movement because if you think of the size of my traps and my delts compared to my lats and being able to really retract my rhomboids and my obviously my paraspinal muscles and where that becomes the most apparent. So, sorry, I have to zoom into my ugly mug. But if I just, if I try and skip further down the set, whereas I start to get a bit fatigued, I'm very much just stabilizing through just the shoulder joint itself. It's just kind of floating. I'm not really engaging my lats or really trying to think about extending through my back. So what happens there is, as I stand up, is the muscles around this section, the paraspinals that that run either side of my spine to keep me stabilized, they're pumping really hard to keep me upright. Whereas if I try to use these muscles along in my lats and everything to come down as well, they wouldn't have been working overtime. They would have been supported alongside that. So that's the biggest point for me. As soon as I'm landing, I'm not thinking about extending through my spine. As soon as I land, I want to think about my shoulder blades are sort of coming together slightly and my lats are pulling down, so I'm completely stable. Okay, so what's happening is I'm getting it up and brute strength is keeping the kettlebell above my head. But then over time, as we can see later on in the sets, as we come to around about this time, you can see my triceps are really working over time here. Um, I'm trying to, I've done it in slow-mo, as slow as I possibly can. But what happens is successively, a lot of it ends up having a knock-on effect. So because the muscles in the middle of my T-spine, so the middle of my back, have really started to pump and really started to work over time, that's, that's stopping me having more movement in my thoracic. That's stopping me extending too much which is then again putting more load onto my triceps, more load onto my shoulders, and it's just having a knock-on effect. So as you can see, I think it's coming up the next couple of reps. This is where the tricep kind of buckles, and this is where it caused the biggest impact in terms of dropping from when I was on for 70 all the way down to 60 reps. So again, it's cost me 10 reps over a five-minute set, which is, which is massive. So you can see my triceps are working overtime here to stabilize. 
because I can't get back as low, um, I'm not extending through my spine, that's stopping, that's restricting my movement, there we go, that's restricting my movement in second dip, second dip something I'll come to in a second. So hopefully, I think it's about this rep coming up now. So if we look at my hips, not able to get back down as low, and then the tri triceps really working hard to stabilize, and that's what's caused me to drop the bell in terms of how I've had to re-rack, spend a bit of time, just allow my shoulders to get strong, energy to recover, and then I can go again. But as people have, have pointed out, so for me, the biggest thing that cost me on the day was not thinking about actually stabilizing through my upper back. And again, just repeated efforts make a big difference. Now, another thing that that did occur as I've watched it later and what a lot of guys have been pointing out is also, again, the timing on the second dip. So the speed on the second dip, there's a few where it is quite quick. And you can see the difference when the bells just go up. But then there's somewhere they start to become really laboured, which again, I end up losing time. I end up losing too much movement overhead. And when you've got that weight moving and shaking up, up backwards and forwards overhead, it just ends up causing loads more fatigue and you end up just dropping a few more reps. So at the moment, I'm still kind of fresh a little bit, so if I move it across, I think it was around about this point where my second dip was starting to come a little bit labored. And there's more movement. So everything's starting to become a little bit sluggish, but that's all coming from that stabilizing overhead Everything start. I was using a lot of energy to stabilize that weight overhead using my triceps on my arms, and that second dip isn't as quick as what it needs to be. So, good few things to work on. And finally, Caroline's raised a great point as well is um, obviously, as I start to fatigue, I start to miss a breath. Now, this is probably one of the most crucial breaths that you can get in terms of a jerk cycle is that exhale on second dip so when you're holding your head if you think about actually how breathing affects our mobility when we're breathing that affects actually what range of movement we've got for our thoracic and how we're able to extend so by me holding my breath in second dip that's having a massive impact on how i'm actually able to extend because of the type of breathing that i'm doing and because i'm staying rigid that's forcing everything to be mega tight and not to be as snappy and as elastic as it can be okay so that's just a few things for me guys that i was really um that really caught my eyes the fact that i really wasn't kind of switched on as much as i should be in terms of stabilizing overhead yes the speed of second dip wasn't there 100 percent all of the time um but for me Personally, how I felt during the set, it was a stabilization that's really knocked off all of those factors. Um, and again, it, it, big improvements to be made, but also important lessons to be learned. It's really good for me to just feed back on these. Um, and it's amazing how one small detail that you, you're not even aware of in the beginning, um, and I certainly wasn't aware of it during the set, um, it's only upon reflection and looking back and seeing that tiny details, how it can have such a massive impact on so many other parts of the sets further down the line. So fatigue and through my triceps and everything else like that. Okay, guys, so hopefully you find that helpful. Hopefully you find me criticizing my own set is uh, pretty good. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to grumble too much. But uh, yeah, great comp all round. And uh, hopefully you find this helpful, guys. Speak to you soon.